The first in-car satellite navigation systems were developed in the 1970s, but they were limited in both design and function. Since then, modern systems have progressed a long way, becoming more accurate, easier to calibrate, and providing more information about the suggested route. The Rover 75 is the first Rover Group product to offer the latest generation of satellite navigation systems as optional factory-fitted equipment. The customer can choose between two models, Highline, which utilizes a board monitor LCD display, or Lowline. The Lowline system, which will be known to the customer as the Navigator, uses the Icon monochrome display at the center of the instrument pack. Both versions use a global positioning system, known as GPS for short, to calculate the vehicle's position and to give instruction on how to reach a desired destination. This video looks at both systems and is in three sections. Section 1 outlines how the GPS navigation system works and where the components are located within the vehicle. Section 2 describes the controls and how to enter a destination. And Section 3 deals with the operation of the inbuilt diagnostics and some likely customer questions relating to both systems. More detailed instructions are available in the operator's handbook supplied with the system. GPS uses satellites which are owned by the American military forces. There are 24 satellites in total and because they are placed strategically around the world only 5 to 11 of them can be seen from a single point at any one time. Each satellite transmits a radio signal containing the satellite's latitude, longitude and altitude together with date and time. In order to calculate its global position the vehicle needs to receive a signal from at least four satellites and as the vehicle moves this data is continuously recalculated thereby giving an accurate fix to within 100 meters. This is known as the vehicle's GPS positioning. To calculate a more exact position the navigation systems computer remembers the latest GPS position and monitors additional signals from its inbuilt gyro and the vehicle's left-hand rear road speed sensor. By plotting this information against a digital map, the system can work out what is known as the dead reckoning position. At any given time, the computer can determine the vehicle's current position by reconciling the dead reckoning position with the GPS positioning. In most situations, this is accurate to within a few meters. The digital map is stored on a compact disc, the advantages being that CDs are relatively cheap, they can hold vast amounts of information, and maps for different countries can be loaded simply by changing the disc. Now that we have a basic understanding of how GPS works, let's look at the components that make up the Rover 75's navigation system and their whereabouts in the vehicle. The heart of the system is the computer itself. As mentioned earlier, its responsibility is to determine the vehicle's position and control the input and output signals. The computer for both low-line and high-line versions is in the right-hand side of the boot. The computer also houses the CD-ROM drive, which is used to update software and, as you know, to hold the map CD. Also within the computer lies the gyro compass. It's a solid state device and it measures any change in vehicle direction, known as angular acceleration. The information from the compass is then used by the computer to calculate the vehicle's heading. Signals from the satellites are picked up via the GPS antenna and receiver. And because the antenna needs to receive signals free from interference, it's located away from the engine under the trim on top of the rear parcel shelf. The receiver in turn relays the signal from the antenna to the computer and is also inside the boot. Let's now look at the user interfaces which differ slightly depending upon the model. The low line model is operated via a switch pack mounted in the radio cassette unit and the messages are displayed via the instrument pack message center. 
The Highline model, on the other hand, uses the board monitor unit, which contains the operating switches and a 5-inch colour monitor. The board monitor is fitted in place of the radio cassette unit and acts as not only the interface for the satellite navigation, but also controls the in-car entertainment system and optional TV. If a TV is installed, then the system will require a video module. It's situated in the spare wheel well, together with the radio tuner. The tuner is located here simply due to lack of space within the board monitor display unit. The TV receives signals from two antennas, which are part of the rear screen. Both of these are connected directly to an antenna amplifier. In addition to the visual display, both navigation systems give voice instructions to the driver. The Highline version uses the front audio speakers by momentarily muting the sound from the in-car entertainment system, whereas the Lowline makes use of its own dedicated speaker. By the way, the road speed signal, which, if you remember, is essential for calculating the vehicle's dead reckoning position, is picked up by the ABS computer then passed onto the navigation system via a dedicated wire. Let's start by looking at the controls of the low-line model. The switch pack has five operational controls, comprising on-off switch, a rotary menu controller, the audio mute switch, a reroute switch, and the audio message repeat switch. Now, here's how to input a destination. It should be done at the start of the journey, and the hierarchy for finding it on the map database is city first, then the road, and finally the number. With the ignition on, press the on-off switch to take the system out of standby mode. Next, using the rotary selector, choose Enter Destination from the menu displayed in the instrument pack. Pressing the selector inputs the choice. Now, input the destination in the order of country, city, road, and finally, address number. When entering the city name, you should start by selecting the city's first letter then the second, and so on, until the name appears. Select Enter and repeat the operation to input the road name and address number. Once entered, choose Destination Guide, and you'll be asked if you'd like to change the route planning. The options available being Shortest, Fastest, and Main Roads. We'll pick Shortest. The system takes a few minutes to calculate the best route and, when ready, displays a direction icon in the instrument pack. This is backed up with a voice instruction. All that's required now is to drive, following the direction of the icon. Any forthcoming change in direction will be supported with a voice instruction. In half a mile, turn right. Furthermore, if you miss the announcement, then you can replay it at any time by simply pressing the repeat button. On reaching the final destination, you'll be notified by the appearance of the destination icon. Moreover, the system automatically reroutes if the vehicle deviates from the current course. However, when caught in a traffic jam, the driver can simply press the reroute button and the computer will calculate an alternative route. Incidentally, if desired, the voice instructions can be switched off by pressing the mute button. As you can see, operating the low-line navigation system is quite straightforward. So let's now look at the high-line version, which is equally simple to use. With the ignition on, pressing the menu button activates the system and displays the main menu. To choose navigation, Simply rotate the left-hand knob until the word GPS navigation becomes highlighted, then press the knob to select it. 
This action calls up the input destination screen. From where you can choose the city by first selecting the city's initial letter, then the second letter, and so on until the name appears. The same operation is repeated to select the road name and finally the address number. Now select Destination Guide, at which point the system will calculate the route. Once calculated, the route is displayed on the map as a white line and an arrow represents the car. The driver simply follows the route, keeping the arrow on the indicated line. All direction changes are indicated in the top right-hand corner of the display. The driver is warned of approaching road junctions in good time via a voice instruction, together with a close-up of the diagram. Right on the head. To assist with fault diagnosis, both navigation systems have their own inbuilt diagnostics accessible via the service mode. The service mode has three main functions. It's used to check the components that are fitted, including their hardware and software levels, to perform health checks on the system's input signals, and to check the status of the GPS operation. In the low-line version, the service mode is selected by highlighting Settings in the main menu and then pressing and holding the Repeat button for longer than 8 seconds. In contrast, on the high-line system, the service mode is called up by firstly selecting and entering the Set option from the main menu, followed by pressing and holding the Menu button for a minimum of 8 seconds. Having entered the service mode, Let's now look at what can be checked. We're using the Highline version as an example, but in reality both versions are very similar. Initially, you're presented with a menu offering five options, ranging from onboard monitor to sensor check. Because it's possibly the most useful for initial diagnosis, we'll look at just one of the options, number five, the sensor check. The sensor check screen displays five live values. These are left-hand rear wheel speed sensor signal, the number of GPS satellites in view, GPS status, gyro output, and the direction of travel. The values allow the service technician to identify problem areas quickly. For example, if the system's speed signal is missing, then it could be due to a communication problem between the ABS and the navigation computers, or even a faulty wheel speed sensor itself. Alternatively, if the screen indicates problems with satellite reception, then it may be the result of a faulty receiver or GPS antenna. Please note, though, that something as simple as a metallic object placed on the rear parcel shelf could also cause a satellite reception problem so always check the simple things first. Here we've had time to show you just one example of using the service mode. The other functions are equally straightforward to use, providing you follow the repair information carefully. Moreover, don't forget that for more in-depth diagnosis, you can use Testbook, which has the ability to read fault codes from both versions of the navigation systems. Of course, as with any new system, there are likely to be many questions from customers who may be unsure of how the navigation system actually works. To help you, we've assembled just a few of what we consider may be most frequently asked, together with the ideal responses. Why didn't the system guide me to my destination in a more direct and efficient fashion? Well, it's possible the area to which you travelled wasn't fully digitised on the map, Thus, the system had to select from a limited network of roads. And please remember the system's based on machine intelligence. It can't always take into account highway construction, local congestion, or the varying speed limits on alternative roads. How often will the maps be updated, and where can I purchase them? The maps are updated approximately twice a year, and they're available from Navigation Technologies. Is there any way to speed up the entry of city and road names? 
Yes, you can choose to select only the first few letters of a city or road, then select Index and pick from a reduced database. Isn't it dangerous to be able to watch TV in a car? Yes, it is. And so the TV switches off automatically when the vehicle starts to move. I almost caused an accident using this system. Don't you think it's too dangerous? Operating the system while you're driving can distract your attention from the road. Always pull well off the road and come to a complete stop before entering data or when closely studying a map. You can listen to the voice instructions while you drive. You have arrived. That's no different from listening to the radio. Why isn't my favourite restaurant listed on the database? Not all facilities in all locations are included yet. However, our supplier is continuously updating the map database and upgrades for your area will be available twice a year. As you'll appreciate, that was just a small example of questions you may be asked by customers, together with some ideal answers. Please remember to try to keep your answers as clear and concise as possible. And if you don't know the answer, then ask your line manager for assistance. We are sure you'll agree that the optional new navigation systems for the Rover 75 will complement its equipment levels and help Rover to meet and exceed the increasing levels of customer expectation. We also hope that this program may have assisted you a little in firstly improving your knowledge of the system and secondly helping you to achieve a first-time fix when working on either navigation system.